All right, good afternoon. My name is Grace Huang, and I am a second year medical student. Um, and I am the president of the TUC Military Club here. Um, thank you all for joining us today um, to our honor our veterans with a special welcome to the esteemed guests of our university. Sorry, it's kind of high. Um, it is great to be here in person once again at our home on Mare Island. Uh, before we begin our formal program, I'd like to acknowledge that Toro University, California sits on unceded land that was part of the 1851-1852 unratified treaties, specifically Track 296, which is part of Treaty O. Um, this land holds historical significance as the ancestral territory of the Karkin people, one of the eight Ohlone um, tribes in the Bay Area. Additionally, Solana County serves as the traditional homeland for various tribes of the Patwin and Miwok. In, in alignment with the university's steadfast com uh, commitment to diversity and inclusion, Toro is actively engaged in um, establishing connections with indigenous communities through academic pursuits, partnerships, historical acknowledgments, community service, and enrollment initiatives. As we commence our ceremony this afternoon, I invite you to stand for the posting of the colors by cadets from the California State <laughs> University Maritime Academy. Then we will honor our nation with a national anthem performed by student Dr. Anish Wadwa. dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, 
Anita, thank you. I'd like to invite to the podium Dr. Tammy Hendricks, um, Interim Chief Academic Officer and Dean for the College of Osteopathic Medicine, and Mr. Newman Hoffman, Vice President and Interim Chief Executive Officer for a camp campus welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome to Tour University of California and happy Veterans Day. Well, tomorrow's Veterans Day, but it's nice to celebrate with all of you today. I'm grateful to be part of this event and to honor our veterans and their hard work and sacrifice for our country. It is no surprise that some of our most talented and hardworking staff, faculty, and students are veterans. Um, I wanted to take a moment, uh, as probably many of you know, Nestor Liga, he shared with me some resources and some other events that he wanted me to share, so I just wanted to take a moment to do that. Um, there's a California Veterans Resource Book for those who are interested. It's on that back table over there, um, and there's more than enough copies for everybody. Uh, also, he wanted me to share a couple of events that are happening this weekend, um, which include the Veterans Day Weekend Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, free admission for veterans uh, and family discounts, uh, November 11th Veterans Day a ceremony behind City Hall at 11 a.m., and November 12th is the Veterans Day ceremony at the Merritt Island Naval Cemetery at 11 a.m. And there's also a Veterans Crab Feed uh, on December 2nd at 6 p.m. at 420 Admiral Callahan Lane in Vallejo. And then also uh, there's the Wreaths Across America event on December 16th at noon at the Mare Island Naval Cemetery. And these, uh, he of course printed these all out and he has some other copies as well. So thank you, Nestor. Before turning it over to Dr. Hendricks, I just want to take a moment to thank the elected officials who've come here to join us today and honoring our veterans. Um, please hold your applause until I've read all of the names. Uh, Mel, Mel Ophelia, representing Congressman John Garamendi's <coughs> office. Vallejo Mayor Robert McConnell. Vallejo's Vice Mayor Rosanna Verder Liga. Vallejo Council Member Dios Dado J.R. Matula. Former City Council Member Pippin Dew. And also Steve Mash, uh, City Council Member. And, uh, thank you again. And so, a round of applause for all of them. Thank you again, and happy Veterans Day. Thank you, Newman, and thank you all so much to all of you who are here with us today. It's both an honor and a privilege to stand before you today as we gather to commemorate and express our deepest gratitude on this very special Veterans Day event. As we gather on this campus, nestled within the historic grounds of an old naval base. The echoes of valor and sacrifice resonate with each step that we take. Before I continue, I must express my heartfelt appreciation to the dedicated planning committee that worked tire tirelessly to orchestrate this meaningful occasion. Andrea Garcia, Michael Barber, Joy Moverly, student Dr. Grace Huang, and all the other students in our military club, your commitment to ensuring that we appropriately honor our veterans has not gone unnoticed, and today's event stands as a testament to your dedication. As we reflect on the significance of this day, <coughs> let us also take a moment to recognize the integral role played by our facilities team, our IT team, our dining and catering services. We're so grateful for all that you do to allow us to host wonderful events like this. Now, as we look around, we see the faces of those who have served and continue to serve our great nation. To our faculty, staff, and students, and guests who are veterans, your sacrifice and commitment to duty do not go unnoticed. You bring a unique perspective and strength to our university community, and for that, we are immeasurably grateful. On this Veterans Day, let us not only express our gratitude, but also renew our commitment to supporting and recognizing the contributions of our veterans. Their service is a testament to the values that bind us together, the values of courage, honor, and selflessness. In closing, let me once again thank the planning committee, our facilities team, IT team, dining and catering services for making this event possible. To our veterans, both present and absent, thank you for your service, and may we always remember the sacrifices made to secure the freedom that we hold dear. May this day be a time of reflection, appreciation, and unity as we stand together in gratitude for the extraordinary people who have served our nation. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thank you, 
you, Dr. Hendricks and Mr. Hoffman. Now I would like to invite Mel or Pia to share remarks on behalf of Congressman John Garamendi. Following that, we will welcome Vallejo Mayor Robert McConnell and Vallejo Vice Mayor Rosanna Verder Aliga to the podium. Good morning. I am a proud son of a U.S. World War II veteran who joined um, the U.S. Navy when he was already working here at Mare Island um, when he started working here in 1932 and he served valiantly and honorably um, for the duration of the war at Pearl Harbor. Um, Congressman Garamendi um, sends his regrets he couldn't be here today, but he is not feeling well, so he is back home. But he asked me to read this letter and it says, every day, United States service members bravely put their lives on the line for our country. The men and women who have served our nation faithfully deserve not only our respect and thanks, but our assurance that they will have the resources necessary to thrive as civilians. I am honored to represent current and former service members and have consistently worked to ensure that they are justly treated. I have spent my career in Congress fighting to fulfill America's sacred obligation to care for the countless men and women who bravely served our country. In 2019, I introduced the Oath Act, a bipartisan effort to ensure active duty military personnel and veterans can accurately document any toxins that they were exposed to while deployed so they can receive VA treatment for any health issues stemming from that exposure. In 2020, my bill, Merchant Mariners of World War II Congressional Gold Medal Act of 2020, was signed into law. This long overdue recognition was a chance to reflect on the bravery, sacrifice, and service of the Merchant Mariners, the oft-forgotten American military branch with the highest per capita casualty rate of any military service branch in the war. I was proud to have authored the legislation to make this possible and have felt honored to present these brave men with their just recognition they deserve. I was also proud to support the Honoring Our Pact Act, signed into law in August 2022 to address the issues affecting veterans exposed to toxins. This legislation will finally treat toxic exposure as a cost of war and will deliver the health care, support, and relief owed to impacted veterans. As a top Democrat on the, committee, the Subcommittee on Readiness, I play an integral role in shaping the National Defense Authorization Act, known as the NDAA. This annual bill sets the policy for U.S. military, and each year I make sure it encompasses the interests of our veterans. In the NDAA for fiscal year 2023, I added provisions to address forever chemical contamination throughout military installations to protect service members from the hazardous chemicals that would have lifelong impacts on their health. Our veterans represent the best of our country. The men and women who have served our nation faithfully deserve not only our respect and thanks, but our assurance that they will have the resources necessary to thrive as civilians. Signed, Congressman John Garamini, 8th District, California. Thank you. <laughs> well, good morning. Uh, it is my proud pleasure to be the mayor of the city of Lyle and also a, a Vietnam veteran and the acknowledgement of Mr. Ophelia. My father was also a World War II veteran who was wounded in the Battle of the Luzon below decks in a heavy cruiser. But what I want to say today is, is an extremely happy day. This is a day for the living. This is a day when those of us who did serve and did come back are able to rejoice. You don't become a veteran just because you separate from the service. It takes time. And for many of us who were in combat, we didn't embrace the veterans community immediately, nor did they embrace us. But then something happened somewhere along the line that caused us to become associated with the veterans community. And when we did, we found a warm, receptive group of people. One of the key triggers for causing veterans to return to a veterans community and to learn how to really become a veteran was a medical exposure. And for those of you at Turo who are going into the medical profession, you serve an extremely important link. Bring those people back in 
and make them realize they are once again human. And so on a day like this, we give thanks to those who have taught us how to be a veteran, and we hope that will continue. So thank you for being here. Thank you for taking your time. And we look forward to your continued support and help in this city. Thank you. And this, at this point, I'd like to bring up our vice mayor, who is the wife of a well-known veteran as well. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mayor McConnell. Um, good morning. Um, not, I'm, a, I'm not only a wife of a uh, U.S. Army veteran and Marine Corps veteran, my dad um, is also a World War II veteran who served in the Philippines uh, during World War II. And he's passed away at the age of 94. And, will always be grateful for his service. And again, I'm very pleased to be here. I was here last year, and thank you to uh, Andrea for always uh, thinking of inviting us here, and it's a pleasure to be here. So on behalf of the city of Vallejo, I, Rosanna, your vice mayor, humbly express our big thank you to everyone here at Turo University for always making the time to commemorate Veterans Day. It is especially most fitting to do, to do this ceremony because your amazing university became the first private Purple Heart University on the West Coast in 2014. And it is there, it, this is where the former Naval Hospital actually served tens of thousands of disabled military personnel during and after World War II. And also the Pacific Orthopedic Center was located here and it was charged with fitting all military amputees with prosthetic limbs. Our city is especially grateful to Toro University, California, and to each of you because you positively make a difference in our community and also make a big difference in the lives of people you serve here in Vallejo. And besides the world-class education, your students and faculty, you also volunteer in our community many, many hours every year, including your free clinics and educational outreach that serve and uplift everyone especially the marginalized and less fortunate members of our city of Vallejo. And again, thank you to Turo University of California for being an amazing partner with the city of Vallejo. Again, happy Veterans Day. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Pia, Mayor McConnell, and Vice Mayor Gerda Aliga for your powerful, powerful and insightful words. I now would like to invite Dr. David Duncan, a retired commander and a pioneer alumnus of the College of Osteopathic Medicine, class of 2001. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I have to raise this a little bit here. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay? Nobody's ever complained that they couldn't hear me okay, so. Uh, so I, I am honored to, uh, to be here and to have been asked to provide a few words regarding the importance of Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. It's on the slider. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, was, I was listening. All right. Um, I do appreciate you coming out today on Veterans Day. Uh, for a lot of us, it is a day off. But for many of us, uh, whether we're in the medical profession or we're uh, in the service, there is no such thing as a day off. Uh, so I thank you for, for coming in today. Uh, this is not about me, but I do want to give you a little bit of context about myself um, uh, in, my, in my military history uh, with the service. Uh, I never considered myself a military person. I did not come from a military family. Um, but I discovered the opportunities that were available uh, to me by the U.S. Navy when I, was, when I entered uh, uh, Toro as a medical student and was grateful for all of those uh, opportunities that I had, including to help to, uh, to, to get me to not retire or not to get out of a, not to graduate from medical school with monster debt. Um, so um, uh, when I did uh, enter with, uh, with the Navy uh, at Turo, I was also able to do most of my clinical rotations at uh, various uh, military hospitals over the, you know, throughout the entire country for those uh, third and fourth years, which were uh, extremely beneficial in my in my training. So I graduated uh, in 2001. Yes, the pioneer class, um, as we've been uh, coined. That's our, 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 our claim to fame. Um, but I began my active duty career uh, after uh, after graduating, doing my internship in family medicine at Camp Pendleton Naval Hospital, 
in Southern California. Uh, after I graduated from an internship, I was given the opportunity to go to flight school in Pensacola with additional training in aviation medicine, which I did not even know was a thing that they uh, uh, offered to Navy doctors. Um, so of course I jumped at the opportunity, uh, finished my training and was uh, initially stationed on the USS Kitty Hawk that was stationed out of Japan. Though I never actually got to Japan first, I flew directly to the carrier and was part of the initial uh, um, uh, instigate or initiation of uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003. Um, so when I finished my, my flight surgeon tour in Japan, I returned to uh, the States and finished my family medicine residency uh, in Bremerton at the Naval Hospital uh, there up in the Seattle area and then returned to be a staff position in the Marine Corps Air Station in Iwakuni, Japan, which is near Hiroshima. It's also where my daughter was born. Uh, I had to drag her along here to, to verify that for me. <laughs> you can wave, it's okay. No? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I was pretty much sure that she came here to heckle me, but she's been quiet, so that's all right. Um, so after I finished my, my, uh, my staff tour in, in Iwakuni, I changed services from the Navy to the U.S. Public Health Service, which is one of the smaller, unknown active duty services uh, that provides medical uh, uh, personnel to numerous different uh, federal agencies, uh, including the Coast Guard. So I was a flight surgeon and a senior medical executive for the Coast Guard in District 11 out of Alameda. Um, and then when that tour was up, I discovered yet another uh, opportunity to work with the, the Public Health Service with the Federal Bureau of Prisons. And I was with the, uh, the, the Federal Correctional Institution in Dublin, um, which has unfortunately gained some notoriety in the last couple of years, but uh, I was the clinical director there and um, I spent the rest of my time in active duty serving the, um, the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Uh, when I was there, I, I uh, helped to initiate the substance use program that was developed, uh, deployed nationally for the entire uh, BOP. And since I retired from active duty uh, in the last two years, I have continued to provide addiction medicine services for a large incarcerated population uh, in this state, many of whom are veterans. I also had the chance to finally grow a beard after 20 years, and uh, you can be the judge of that. I don't know that that would be considered a success, but <clears throat> that's all right. <laughs> so people join the military for many reasons. For the opportunities that uh, it provides, for education, for the adventure, uh, for the travel. I was always told, join the Navy, see the world, which I did. But most of us do have a drive to serve our country. And that is to serve in many different uh, capacities. Additionally, it's important that we also accept the risk that it entails. And um, that is both personal risk and um, professional risk. Uh, active duty members serve their country regardless, regardless of political affiliation. No matter who's in charge, we take orders and we complete those orders. We don't judge those things, we follow those orders. Uh, and we do give up some of our rights you know, to free speech in the interest of preserving those rights for the public. I can tell you that the decision to serve is not taken lightly by anybody who joins. There is no real day off. In almost any rate, in any of the services, you can get a call to pack your sea bag and yep, we're gonna be going for a ride in 24 hours. So get ready. The associated risk with, I mean stress rather, uh, with being in active duty is, uh, it involves the military members themselves as well as family members. And it can be incredible. As humans, and we are humans, we're not army robots, we are humans. And we tend to turn to outside options to deal with these stresses sometimes. For the first half of my career in the Navy, we didn't learn about addiction medicine. We didn't learn about treatment or diagnosis other than alcohol and tobacco use. 
the policy was one strike and you're out. You get one test that has positive for marijuana or opiates or cocaine, and that was it. There was no exception. Um, the government does tend to move at a pace that can be best described as glacial, <laughs> but it does move. And in most cases, it moves in the right direction. Uh, one of the major hurdles with identifying, diagnosing, and treating substance use disorder is the stigma that is associated with substance use. And that's the same whether it's in the community or whether it's in active duty. Friends, family, and even the service that you swore an oath to frequently view substance use as a failure or a lack of moral fiber or a weakness. You just made a bad choice and you got to pay for it. A few years ago, our policy for even the community was just say no to drugs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Great response. laughs> and that's, that was not effective. It did not take into consideration how addiction actually works. Um, so these, these, these policies of just say no or one strike and you're out or zero tolerance, we know that they are not beneficial, they are not productive, and they do not help the people who are actually involved in these conditions. And unfortunately, it leads to, uh, to far too many uh, veterans keeping their use in the shadows. Um, so this results in ongoing use at the detriment of their jobs, their families, and their lives. We know the extreme danger of the opioid epidemic as it's evolved in the last few years and the thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have died and this includes veterans of course from accidental overdose now veterans do have these days they have resources to help with this and even though as with every substance use clinic in the country the VA is understaffed in this capacity but there is help available and they are making a difference in increasing that benefit to veterans so this is my this is my point to you. The battle against substance use is one that we cannot fight alone. It is a formidable enemy that can silently infiltrate our lives, affecting not only our own well-being, but also our families, our friends, and the very communities that we're sworn to protect. I implore each one of you to recognize the signs, not just in others, but within ourselves. Substance use does not discriminate. It can affect any one of us. That's regardless of rank, background, experience, financial status, race, gender. It affects everybody. Everybody in the community, everybody in the service. And it is vital that we provide support, understanding, and resources for those who may be struggling. Seeking help is not a sign of weakness but a testament to our resilience and commitment to bettering ourselves and our community. As veterans, we are no strangers to adversity. We, have, we must approach this challenge with the same determination and camaraderie that defined our service. We have to foster an environment where seeking help is not stigmatized, but encouraged. A culture of support, understanding, and acceptance. So let us be vigilant and compassionate, offering a helping hand to our comrades who are navigating the complex path towards recovery. Our duty to our nation did not end when we took off the uniform. Our duty extends to supporting one another and to become beacons of hope and strength for those among us who are grappling with the burdens of substance use. We owe it to ourselves to our fellow veterans, and maybe more importantly, to those who follow in our footsteps. So we can overcome this challenge, just as we faced and conquered countless others, but we need to take our shared experiences and use them as the cornerstone of our support system. Let our dedication to one another echo the commitment that we made when we first swore to protect and defend our nation. Thank you for your time. Thank you to all who have served. Uh, and may we stand together in this ongoing battle, providing unwavering support and solidarity 
to every veteran in need. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Dr. Duncan, for your enlightening remarks. Concluding our program, oh, well. I would like to welcome my fellow classmates, student Dr. Gurman Singh, the president of Calm Student Executive Council, to share a few words, followed by student Dr. Melody Wong, the vice president of TUC Military Club, who will be presenting a poem. Thank you to everyone, and thank you, Chris, for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty, and most importantly, our honored veterans and guests. On this meaningful occasion here at Turner University, California, we come together as a community to extend our deepest gratitude to those courageous service members who have served our nation with unwavering dedication and sacrifice. Today, we reflect not only on the valor displayed on the ground, but also on the resilience and commitment of those who have chosen the path of service. In our midst, we have individuals who have not only embraced the call to heal, but have also answered the call to defend our freedoms. To our veterans here at Toro and beyond, we express our heartful, heartfelt thanks. Your sacrifices have paved the way for us to pursue knowledge and healing. Your dedication to both education and service sets a brilliant example for us all, inspiring even some of our own students to embark on a journey to serve our country in the future. As we honor our veterans today, let us remember that their contributions extend far beyond their uniform. Their experience and dedication add immeasurable value to our collective journey here at Turo and in our city of Vallejo as well. Now, I hope this Veterans Day serves as a reminder to appreciate and support those who have defended our nation. May we, as a community, continue to honor and support our veterans, not just on this day, but every day. To our veterans, we say thank you for your sacrifice, your courage, and your unwavering commitment to a cause greater than oneself. Thank you. Happy Early Veterans Day to the Toro University California Committee. My name is Melody Wong, a second year medical student here representing the military club at Toro University California. I am just one of the several students of, I am just one of the several health profession scholarship program students here at our school, and I will have the amazing opportunity to join the US Navy as a physician after graduating. I'm honored to stand before you all today on this historic ground of the US Navy's first base on the Pacific coast. I can think of no better place to continue, to continue and complete my medical education before I leave to serve our nation's sailors and Marines in the fleet. The students of the military club would like to thank the veterans in our community and across the nation for their service, the active duty service members for the work they do, and the university for bringing us all together here today. To celebrate today, the university would like us to offer this poem titled Veterans Day Limerick by Neil Dickinson. There are times we want to forget, like when troubles and sadness we've met, but this day in November, we'll always remember the heroes to whom we're in debt. They were young, full of life and ambition, but some dreams never reached their fruition. With their lives put on hold, they were daring and bold and accomplished their ultimate mission. Most returned when the battle had ended, some with wounds that would never be mended. Many others did not, having died where they fought while ensuring our home was defended. But in spirit, they'll always be here. To our hearts, they'll always be near. While our eyes may be wet, we will never forget. Let's remember each day of the year. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, thank you to student Dr. Herman and Melody for your beautiful words. This brings us to the end of our Veterans Day ceremony. Before we retire the colors, I wanna extend my heartfelt gratitude to all who played a role in today's event um, from participants to our organizers. Special appreciation goes to dedicated individuals in IT and facilities for their efforts in setting up and maintaining this wonderful space. Now I invite you to rise as the colors are retired by the cadets from the California State University Maritime Academy.
Thank you. There's your, <laughs> there's your freshmen in the back. Thank you for coming. <laughs>